All right, so I was waiting to do an update video, but I've had quite a few comments on some of my older videos. So I wanted to go ahead and try to get something out there just to let people know. Well, apologize, my head is stuffed up and so I don't sound the best, but let's go ahead and knock this out. So the deal is with the JBLs, these are the 590s, the Studio 590s. I have them for LCR and wides now. Um, in terms of the center, uh, a lot of people have been posting on the 530 and 520C. Um, the 590, I mean, kind of makes sense. The 590 is the only one that really matches the 590s. Um, even in this horizontal position, uh, it becomes so, so close to, you know, matching these. I mean, to me, it's, it's fine. Um, and the 580s, 570s, anything below, they just do not match as well as this, which should make sense. Um, but, you know, if you're debating, um, if you have like say 590s, don't buy a, I would suggest you not buy a 520C, 530. If you can put a 590, I know it's big, but that will sound the best. If you can't start just going down the list, 590, 580, 570, 530, okay? I. Really, it should be 570 is preferably the minimum you go if you have a if you have the room um, because the 530s will cost you more. You know, I think the cheapest they go is like 240, 245, and a 570 hits 200 bucks. So 570 is cheaper. It does it is bigger, but it also sound better because it has better bass um, than the 530. Uh, they do have some the same um, width horn though and so they sound the same from the treble um the treble sides like sound stage and whatnot projection um <clears throat> over here if you see my other video i do oh sorry the 580s are there the 570s are back there um i do have them on these little stands i had to put some isolation under here while i try to figure out a better isolation technique, uh, something to put in between here because these little feet are rattling in here when the stub, the sub goes low sometimes at certain frequencies. So I'm trying to minimize that rattle. Um, so I'm trying to isolate it and that's the quickest thing I could find right now to just shove under there. I got some EVA pads and they did not work at all. They did nothing. I have measurements to prove it. Um, I use it over here on two different subs. Um, but anyways, um, powering this, I've got the JBL SDP 55 Pre Pro. Um, then I've got Outlaw 7000 X's. And then I've decided to go 9.4.6. And because... Um, there's only, you know, seven channels plus seven channels equals 14 channels. You need 15 to go 9.4.6. So I actually had to buy an Outlaw uh, 2220. It's a mono block, And um, that is going to be for the center. So what I'll do is I'll run just like left and right on these guys. I haven't wired it up yet. I was trying to wait. Uh, but I just, it's been so crazy with Christmas and everything. I haven't had time. Um, I bought another stand so that I could take the bottom short part right here and add it to this, but failed to remember that the bottom on this is open. It does not have the screw port to make it add. I would have to add another whole shelf. And the issue with that is I don't think my cables are long enough to where if I added another shelf, this would move up here. And I think a lot of my cables would be too short at that point. They just aren't long enough. So I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna test it out on the floor under there. I can unscrew um, the feet on, down there if I have to, to get some more airflow to make it, you know, raise the whole thing up, uh, maybe like a half inch or something. There's not a lot of room. It's like a three quarters of an inch um, for airflow, but uh, I mean, that whole amp for just a single channel, I think the heat dissipation is going to be fine because these guys don't have a lot of room either. 
and uh, that's seven channels, and they're fine. So we'll see how it goes. I mean, there's the power cord for it right there. Um, I did want to install the six ceiling speakers. That was my goal before Christmas, and I set a date to do it, and then I realized that morning that there's fire blocks in the wall, and so just wiring them through there and dropping them down and through the insulation was not going to happen. So now I, I think the only way I can do it is by going out into my garage, which then goes down below here and actually can go into the crawl space like my internet's doing. And I'll come up through the crawl space, hopefully into the wall, and then be able to make a wall plate there. So um, the problem was that day it started raining and I do have a leak in my crawl space. And so it gets wet and I'm like, I'm not going down there and I've got enough other stuff. I was also rebuilding my PC at that time. Um, so I was dealing with that. So I said, forget it, I'll do it later. Um, so I'm kind of rambling, I know, but I'm trying to cover some stuff. Um, I'm, I don't know if I'll keep the consoles here. I may move them over there and just hook them straight up to the TV. We'll see. I had to get the HDMI upgrade 2.1 upgrade for this to allow the eARC to transfer the audio signal through. So we'll see about that. Um, as for the OLED, this is the LG C1 77 inch. Um, I do love it. I know they just announced that there's new ones coming out. I don't care if it's a big difference, which I doubt I'll upgrade, but I might wait for the next gen or so before I upgrade. Um, I think that's about it. Um, people, oh, here, this is going to be a super mess because I haven't, well, yeah, <laughs> I was moving stuff for the wedding and whatnot, like my old cables, my old computer case, my brother's TV receivers I got to get rid of and my ceiling speakers over there and old junk. These are my old boxes for my my amps and stuff, but you can see here I've got another set of 570s, two sets of 530s, and then I also have the 520 down there. So I've actually got a 5.1, well I've got two subs, um, a 5.1 setup that I can do with those as well. Um, and I know a lot of people really talk about this guy, and they're really asking me, and I didn't plan on doing this, but I'm going to do it. <clears throat> when you look at the size comparison of these horns, I think you'll start to see why there's such a big difference. Why I've said there's such a big difference in the sound. You're going to tell me that that horn is going to be able to compete with that one and sound the same? Mm-mm. No. The only way to help it would be through, you know, DSP. You know, Dirac. Which, I love Dirac. It's pretty awesome. So, no. I don't suggest you buy this. I don't think you should. Uh, it just... it Just don't, please. <laughs> um doesn't matter if it's at your level or not i mean i've literally held the thing like this and listened to it it did not sound good so um i just want to try to cover that for people because I, I get a lot that's the videos that i get the most comments on are about the 520 versus the 530s and yes the 530s are better but save some money use some extra space and get a 570 instead you'll thank me later um subs if you ever have the question or the doubt, there's a reason I went from one to two to four. And I did it like pretty quickly. Uh, there is a difference. It has to do with room acoustics. It does boost your bass output, which is nice. Um, but uh, the room acoustics is the, the massive part and the main reason you should get multi-sub. So now... Um, this, these three seats all have a flat frequency response and there's only one null at that seat. Whereas before, with two subs even, 
I had no nulls here, but I had two nulls here and here, and I had three nulls here. And uh, yeah, just four subs just knocked that out. So, um, and I think if maybe I put a sub back there or something, I could maybe get that null fixed, but I'm not, not too worried. There's actually more of an issue with this one. There's more of a dip out here. So, um, yeah, just want to let you guys know. And then, oh, my little record player, Technics SL1200 MK5 with the Audio-Technica, was the VM54ML, I think. And I just put a, uh, oh, shoot. I got the, what is this, the Reloop? It's just uh, technically a different, for a different table, but it works. It's a remade, uh, remade you know, fit um, case. Um, just a cheap white head that's based off of the old Technics one. Um, then I've got the original, well, it's not original, I had to buy a new one, but it's like RS0008 mat, rubber mat. And then I have an, a Cherry Audio acrylic, I think three millimeter mat on top with a, I forgot what the weight is on this thing, but I think it's like 38 or something. I went as heavy as I could without going past the point that is bad for this motor. Um, I looked up stuff about that. Um, and then I just got this metal cover, make it white. I wanted white and black. Um, and then this is a Muffs V PP4 uh, phono preamp, uh, which I do like. Uh, I do like it a lot. And it's a DIY kit. So uh, the reason I have this on it is because my TV reflects in the plastic. So when you're watching a movie, you'll see this bright rectangle on the screen. So I had to, had to cover this thing. It's kind of silly, but whatever you deal with it. I need to buy an actual cover instead of just using a washcloth I grabbed. I just keep forgetting. But uh, yeah, other than that, um, people wondering, PS5, finally, Xbox One Series X. I got the Wii U, I got a Switch, PC, um, and then I've got some old consoles too. I might put those over here, I don't know. But yeah, uh, if you got any questions, let me know. Um, oh, quick thing for pre-pros they are a pain and they do sometimes and they do have glitches if you want a more plug and play rarely have issues just get like an onkyo you know or denim Marantz, you know get one of those uh, because these do have more issues they are harder to deal with but i will say dang they sound good they do sound good. So, um, and in Dirac, I really like Dirac. So uh, that's why I like the, the Onkyo, I, the new Onkyos with Dirac. I, I'm really thinking about getting one for my bedroom. Um, so that's something else. But anyways, all right, guys, uh, peace out.